Hello world! My name is Victor Engelmann and this is the third part of my tutorial on Linux kernel programming. Now in the last part um, we've written a little uh, kernel module and uh, then in this intermediate uh, video that's not strictly part of this series um, I've built this little device uh, uh, for my Raspberry and uh, I've moved the kernel module to the Raspberry um, and um, yeah I've prepared a little bit of code that's not so uh, not so interesting um, so what I've prepared is uh, basically just a translation from yeah from our alphabet to the Morse code of the um, of the characters okay and um, yeah uh, the device that I've built uh, is um, just uh, a very small electric circuit that uh, just has a so-called buzzer that I can turn on by uh, by uh, putting electricity on one of the GPIO pins so um, yeah, I think you can already imagine where this is going. Um, I want to uh, be able to um, to send uh, text to this kernel module, and then the kernel module is supposed to uh, um, to turn that buzzer on according to the Morse code of the text that I'm sending. So um, yeah, what we are doing today has uh, two parts. And uh, yeah, the one part is uh, communicating with these GPI opens of the Raspberry. Um, that's not so interesting. That's not really the focus of the video because it's just an example of something you can do with the data that you're getting. Um, and uh, I want to emphasize, uh, if you want to communicate with the GPI opens on a Raspberry, uh, you don't need to write a kernel module for that. There are good kernel modules out there um, and um, you can just use these, like wiring uh, Pi, for example, um, although that's uh, deprecated. Um, but uh, anyhow, um, there are better ways to communicate with the GPI opens from user space. Um, so I'm only doing this as an example. The real focus of the video is the other part, um, the communication between user space programs and the kernel module, because a kernel module runs in kernel space. So um, it has some extended um, access rights. Um, and uh, yeah, user space programs don't have this these extended access rights. So um, we need to know how we can send data from user space to kernel space so that the um, kernel module can do something with it. OK. So um, first things first, um, I will quickly write the stuff that is going to um, communicate with the GPI opens. And uh, as I said, um, that's, uh, there are better ways to do that. Um, you don't need a kernel module for that. I'm just doing it uh, here as an example. Okay. Linux GPIO.h and uh, since we will have to deal with uh, timings, you know, we need to turn the buzzer on for a certain time and then turn it off for a certain time, we will also need the header Linux um, delay.h. So these are for the GPI opens. Okay, so when you want to communicate with GPI opens, I'll just throw this out here. Um, then the first thing you need to do is uh, you need to tell the kernel, hey, I want to talk to this GPI open. So you need to GPIO request 
so you kind of open a connection to that GPIO pin, you know, so that the kernel will not allow another program to access the same pin at the same time. So GPIO request, GPIO pin. Um, the first parameter for GPIO request is an integer. Um, so the uh, the pins have different IDs. Uh, that's a bit confusing. Um, the buzzer is connected to the pin number 11 and number 11 has the uh, ID 17. I don't know why they did that, but uh, uh, yeah, that's the way it is. So if, if I want to talk to pin number 11, I need to uh, talk to the ID 17. And I'm going to use that pin as a parameter so that I can change it. Okay, so we need to request that pin. Give it some ID, like most GPIO. And uh, yeah, if that pin is already in use, then we will get a result smaller than zero. And then we um, tell the kernel here, okay, something went wrong, we don't return zero, and then the loading of the module would have failed at that point. Yeah, the numbers of the GPI opens also change between different revisions of the Raspberry. And um, yeah, I really don't know why they did that. Um, the wiring Pi library um, dealt with that problem, but uh, yeah, okay, that library is deprecated. So unfortunately uh, you shouldn't use that anymore. Um, Uh, before we request a GPIO, we should test if it is valid. Then we also return minus one. Okay, so at this point, um, we own the GPIO pin. Um, and um, yeah, GPIO pins can be, uh, they can have two different states. You can uh, configure them to be an output pin or an input pin. Um, so that you can read uh, data from a push button or something. Um, so we configure it to be an output pin because we want to send data out. Module is um, removed. Uh, 
um, we turn the <laughs> we turn the pin off <laughs> because uh, yeah I've had fun with that uh, when you uh, unload the module while it's uh, uh, sending data to the buzzer then uh, and you unload that in that moment then uh, the module will not turn it off anymore and then uh, the buzzer will just stay on <laughs> uh, yeah gpi free so um, um, yeah we need to free the pin at the end so uh, that's the opposite of requesting it uh, we are telling the uh, kernel at this point okay uh, you can reuse this pin now for something else uh, we don't uh, need it anymore okay and now we already have uh, the code that uh, turns any string into a sequence of calls to these functions dit and da, which are yeah, um, standard representation of the short and long sound in uh, Morse code. Um, So we will need another function, void author sound. Which will uh, yeah, turn the sound on or off for a certain time. So we've already seen GPIO set value. So we will set the uh, value to this value here, on or off. And then we will sleep for a while. So that's coming from this uh, delay.h, uh, the function m sleep. Sleep is of course in milliseconds, um, and uh, yeah, I will use another parameter here so that we can um, change how long this is going to be. So the normal time scale will be 100 milliseconds. Um, so a dit sound will turn the buzzer off for 100 milliseconds. So more sound will be on for one unit of time. And then off for one unit of time, I think. Whereas a da sound will um, will um, take three units of time so 300 milliseconds This is looking good so far. So maybe I'll just put a Morris call here and uh, just Morse. Um, 
now. Let's mouse SMS. Okay. So this is really the code that we are working on. I've loaded that through the um, SSH file system fish. So make C Hello World module is already loaded. Good. Okay. Um, Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I already see what's going wrong here. Um, between the uh, characters, there's supposed to be two additional um, units of pause. So Okay. Now try one more time. should rebuild it. If you are as old as me, then you might remember that this did 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 used to be the uh, the default um, ringtone for, uh, for Nokia phones that uh, you would get if you receive an SMS. So I think that's a bit funny that uh, the ringtone for an SMS was the actual Morse code for SMS. Okay, but uh, yeah, that was just a test. So the GPIO stuff works. And now let's come to the actual um, thing that we want to do here. Um, because right now we only have this init function and uh, the exit function and nothing is done in between. And that's of course not what you want to do when you write a module because a module is supposed to do something and not just be there. So. Um, um, what we need to do now is in this init hello, um, we need to tell the kernel hello, I'm more than just some module that can be loaded and unloaded. So um, we need to tell it hello, I am a char device, a character device. I mean, not necessarily a character device uh, if you're doing something else. Um, so 
So for the next steps, we will need the headers Linux fs.h for file system. cdev.h for character devices. we need to do now is um, yeah we need to tell the kernel hello I'm a char device a character device um, how do we do that um, first we need an def t object Set that to mkdev, and um, yeah, here we now set the major and minor number for that device. Um, if you remember the um, the video series about uh, um, Linux from scratch, uh, you've seen um, that we uh, had to tell the kernel about uh, uh, we had to call this mknot program and um, uh, give it major and minor numbers uh, to tell it, hey, I want a null device under def null, for example. And uh, this is where we are going with this. Um, so we need just some major and minor number uh, for now. So um, with cut proc devices, we can uh, look at a list of devices that are already there. Um, okay, we have, uh, now we need to just pick one number that is not yet in use. So 136 is used. Let's just take 137 and minor number zero. a name like GPIO Morse here. Okay, now we've uh, told the kernel that uh, uh, there's going to be a char device with this uh, uh, major and minor numbers. Um, and uh, now we need to really give that char device to, uh, to the kernel. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create that char device. How do we do that? Um, well, for a simple case, um, we just need to provide three functions. Static int my open or any function. This function will be called when the corresponding device file is opened. And that needs to return zero um, for a success. Now, we are not actually uh, writing anything, so uh, we can just return zero here without making any checks. If you are actually controlling a device with this, then um, in this function you might want to uh, open the connection to the device. 
but um, if we had to do any checks uh, um, we would have to look into the inode and file structures and uh, similarly for the closing function this function will be called when the corresponding device file is closed. Okay. Now the interesting part is the um, write function. type SXT here we get a buffer but that buffer is in user space so we cannot uh, immediately access it length and an offset. I've never used that offset. Okay, so as I said, we cannot uh, access the buffer directly. So what we need to do is um, we need to have a buffer here. take a buffer of size 129 bytes and then we need to use the function copy from user where we say okay um, I want you to copy from this buffer to my local buffer Yeah, how many characters do I want to copy? Well, if everything fits into this buffer, then uh, I will request all the characters. Otherwise, at most 128 characters, because that's the size of my buffer. This copy from user is a bit unusual in the Unix world, actually, because um, normally you would say if I have a function that uh, transfers data from some place to another place, uh, it would normally uh, give you as, as a return value the number of uh, bytes that it has copied. Um, but uh, yeah, here it's a bit uh, weird because uh, uh, this function returns the number of characters that are left or that it couldn't um, copy. So uh, yeah, if that value is zero, then you know everything worked well, but um, I will just um, translate that. So that I then know how full is my buffer. And then um, 
and then I can um, put in the zero termination for a C string. So we uh, store it into the log file uh, or the, um, the ring buffer so that we can um, can look into the ring buffer if anything goes wrong. we've written and um, just to avoid any problems I will just uh, say okay we've written anything everything um, and just ignore uh, the case if anything goes wrong okay so these functions um, are there and it's quite obvious what I want to do with this right I want the kernel to call them my open function when it opens a file should call my close if it closes the file and it should call my write when I write to that file from user space. Okay, now we need to create the V table if you want. Um, C++ would do that automatically for us, but uh, yeah, in a, a programming language that isn't uh, object oriented, you have to do this manually to uh, uh, to simulate object-oriented programming in a way. Um, so we need to instantiate a structure of type file operations. I give it the name my fops. So we filled it with pointers to these functions. And we have to associate that with a char device or character device. associate our functions with a character device. give this character device to the kernel. And 
we associate it with this major and minor numbers. And we create one of these uh, objects, just like we have the one here for one object of that type. Now check if that was successful. Wait a minute, I forgot. Um, we also need to uh, unregister the device when we uh, unload the module. For this to work, we need to make this dev t a global one. I think this should work. Let's build this. Okay, it compiled. Okay, it looks uh, like it worked so far. Um, okay, so now we've loaded the module. Um, the module should have registered uh, itself as major number 137, minor number zero. Um, so what we can do now is we can call mk not for make node under def uh, gpio morse c for a character device 137 is the major number that we've picked and 0 is the minor number that we've picked Okay, this looks okay. Um, now I allow writing anybody to that device. Okay, so let's try this uh, one more time, but uh, on a different pin. Let's try again on um, the other pin.
Okay, so that was very successful. Uh, we've built the external hardware. Um, we've written a driver, uh, um, integrated that driver in our system. And uh, now we have communicated with the hardware from user space using that driver. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Um, of course, your imagination is the only limit for what you can do with that. Like uh, you could use stepper motors to, uh, um, to drive um, little cars or uh, robots or whatever. Um, yeah, the, your imagination is the only limit here. So um, anyhow, I think for today that's enough. So uh, yeah, tune in next time. Uh, if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe and see you next time.